In this lesson, we're going to look at creating virtual hard disks, and we're going to create them through Hyper-V Manager and through PowerShell. So if we're going to create a new virtual disk and we're not creating it through the new virtual machine wizard, we can create that new virtual disk by going to new and clicking on hard disk. Now, just like a new virtual machine, there's a new virtual hard disk wizard that will guide you through creating uh, the three types of virtual disks. We're gonna look at creating a dynamically expanding virtual disk and a fixed virtual disk. So when we're creating our virtual disk, we have our options of creating a VHD, a VHDX, or a VHD set. Now remember, the newer format as of uh, Windows Server 2012 is VHDX. Prior to Windows Server 2012, it was VHD, and it supported up to a two gigabyte virtual disk. So we're gonna create a VHDX. So I click on Next, then I have my three options. So I can create a fixed disk, a dynamically expanding disk, or a differencing disk. Now by default, when you're creating a new virtual machine, it will want to create a dynamically expanding virtual disk. Basically where we're saying, okay, this is the maximum size that the virtual disk can be, but when it is initially created, it's not going to use up that entire uh, allotment of space. If I select the fixed disk, it will allocate the full amount of storage that I'm creating that virtual disk for. So let's take a look. If I'm creating a fixed disk, I'm going to call this uh, test virtual disk, and I'm going to call it fixed. <clears throat> Again, you can specify a different location. For now, we're just going to keep it as the default. At this point, I'm going to create a 30 gigabyte fixed virtual disk. So I'm going to enter the amount, the size here, and you'll notice that it allows for up to 64 terabytes. So that's the maximum size of a VHDX file. So I specified 30 gigs. I'm going to click Next. And then I'm going to uh, click Finish, and it's going to create that virtual disk. Now, what you're going to notice is it's going to take a, a little bit longer here than when it creates a dynamically expanding virtual disk. And again, that's because it's allocating those 30 gigs to that new VHDX file. So because it's doing that, unlike the dynamically expanding, it does take a bit more time depending on the size of the disk. So the larger the fixed disk size, the longer it's going to take for it to create that virtual disk. Now, looking here where we saved it. So let's open up the location here. So that's going to be on our C drive under uh, users, public, Public Documents, Hyper-V, Virtual Hard Disks. And you'll see that we have a series of virtual hard disks that we've created that uh, show up in this folder. So we'll just wait for it to finish uh, creating that virtual disk. And there we go. So now, if you take a look here at the virtual disk that was created. There's our test virtual disk fixed VHDX file. If we go to the properties of it, notice that the size is 30 gigs. So that's the size we wanted it to be. And the actual size of the disk here is 30 gigs. So let's go back now and let's create another virtual hard disk. And we're going to create a dynamically expanding uh, VHDX. So I'm going to call this test virtual disk and I'm going to call it dynamic. Same location here. 
and I'm going to allocate again 30 gigs. Click finish on that. And notice it's pretty much created right away. There's no wait time. Let's go and look at our folder here. So there's our test virtual disk that we just created. And you'll notice it's only four megs in size. So even though I said, okay, it's 30 gigs, create the virtual disk, the size of that file is only four megs when you initially create the dynamically expanding virtual disk. And the reason for that is, again, when you're assigning a fixed value, it means that is the size of the disk. It takes up all that space right from the creation of the fixed virtual disk. Dynamic, it can expand up to 30 gigs. So it's only going to use what it needs to up to the maximum uh, size of the disk that you have uh, specified during the creation of that virtual disk. Now, you do have options um, as well if you're going to be expanding uh, these virtual disks. So we can actually go in and look at the edit disk options. So going into the edit disk here, uh, we can specify where are we going to locate the file. So we can go browse here and let's say the uh, dynamic disk we want to modify. So here's our options. We can compact, we can convert, or we can expand on the virtual disk. So let's say we wanted to expand the size of that virtual disk. So the maximum, we want to set a new maximum value. So let's say it's currently 30 gigs. We want to make that 50 gigs. So I'm going to enter the 50 gigabytes here. Click next, click finish. And if we go back to where our virtual disks are located here, again, it doesn't change anything about the actual file size. But if we were to go into edit the disk again, let's locate it, expand. Now notice the current size is 50 gigabytes. So it does allow us to easily expand that virtual disk if we figured, oh, okay, 30 gigs wasn't enough, I need to expand it and, and add more uh, room so that uh, the virtual disk can expand past uh, the 30 gigs I initially set it as to 50 gigs, as an example. So a couple different options that you have uh, when you're creating the disk. Uh, also in the lab activity, you'll look at creating a differencing disk as well as looking at editing uh, the virtual disks as well and seeing what, uh, what happens like you saw here. So those are the options uh, that we have for creating our virtual disks here in Hyper-V Manager. Now, the other option that we have here is, okay, we've created those virtual disks. Now let's allocate them to uh, one of our virtual machines. So if I go down here to the settings for our test MS2 virtual machine, I can go over to the hard drive here and I can browse and say, okay, I want my fixed virtual disk to now be allocated to my test MS2 virtual machine. And I can hit apply and now it's attached to that virtual machine. I can also click on the inspect button. The inspect button, what it's gonna tell me is uh, which location the file name of the virtual disk, uh, the current size, and how large that disk can get. So if you're ever unsure about the virtual disk that's attached to a virtual machine, go into the settings, go to the, drive, the hard drive and inspect, and it will tell you the details about the virtual disk or disks that are attached to that virtual machine. Now let's look at creating virtual disks with PowerShell. Now we did create one uh, during the uh, previous lesson when we were creating a virtual machine. Uh, 
Uh, but let's again look at um, our options here. So we're going to run PowerShell as an administrator. And then what I want to do is I want to create a uh, new VHDD, and it's going to be a VHDX, but uh, on the path. And we're going to save it here in C users public documents uh, hyper V virtual hard disks. And we're going to call this uh, test virtual disk, and we're going to call it dynamic 2 VHDX. And we're going to enter uh, the size, and we're going to put it as 50 gigabytes, and we're going to say dynamic. And just like we did before, it's created that dynamic virtual disk. But let's say we wanted to create a fixed virtual disk through PowerShell. Well, what we can do is reuse that same command. I'm going to reduce the size here just so that it doesn't take too long to 20 gigs. And I'm going to say fixed. Now, one thing that you'll notice here, when you're creating the virtual disk, the name matters. So if you look back at my command here, I had specified it with the same name as the disk I just created. Well, you can't do that. So what I have to do is make sure that I change that, and I'm gonna call it test virtual disk fixed two instead of dynamic two. And now it will go ahead and create that virtual disk. So every virtual disk that you create has to have a unique name associated with it for the folder that you're saving it in. So if I had tried to create that test virtual disk dynamic two in a different folder, it would have allowed it. But because it's in the same folder, again, it has to be a unique name uh, for the virtual disk. And again, it helps with administration uh, that you have, uh, you know, unique naming conventions so that you're easily able to identify uh, the virtual disks that you've created. So now we've created a dynamic virtual disk and a fixed virtual disk. So I'm going to refresh here. And you'll notice there's our dynamic two and our fixed two. And just like we saw through the GUI in Hyper-V Manager, the dynamic disk is only allocated four megabytes, and the fixed disk has allocated the full 20 gigabytes that I specified in the PowerShell command. So there you have it, two ways that you can create two different types of disks in Hyper-V, one through the GUI using Hyper-V Manager, and the other using PowerShell.